So a very warm welcome to everyone watching this and we hope you have been outdoors enjoying the warm weather and have been looking after yourself and your family. Now on the 10th of September each year we observe World Suicide Prevention Day. It's a growing problem and the numbers tell a shocking story. Every year organisations and communities around the world come together to raise awareness of how we can create a world where fewer people die by suicide. Each year has a different theme and focus to bring to light a specific aspect of suicide prevention and this year's theme is creating hope through action. The aim is to instill light in those who have been touched by the darkness of suicide and self-harm, to highlight that our actions, no matter how big or small, may provide hope to those who are struggling and that we can overcome feelings of hopelessness and it is possible not only to survive, but to thrive in life. Today, I'd like to welcome our guests, Bernie Graham and Roger Morton. Bernie is our psychologist at Build Force, and Roger, huge Build Force supporter, is Group Change Director at Vistry with a 25 year career in the armed forces, including commanding officer at Sandhurst. Welcome to you both, and thank you for your support today. Roger. In your various roles, you've had first-hand experience of suicide and self-harm. Is that right? Could you share that yeah. with us? Um, sadly, in, in a long career in the army, you do come close to these things. So whether that be dealing with the immediate aftermath um, of a, a sad event, or um, as I had towards the end of my career, um, somebody who uh, was very close to him was trying to take their own life and, and quite by chance, uh, one of my officers uh, stumbled across them uh, and managed to save them um, and uh, we dealt with the immediate aftermath of that. I'm mean, pleased to say in that instance um, that young trainee did actually leave the service but went on to have a, a good career elsewhere. So you know there is light um, and those of us that have been close to it um, you know we we remember those things very clearly uh, and and action this 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 thing of of creating hope through action is so so good this year because it's what we can do um, to help people by doing things ourselves um, and I think that's the really important thing about um, this this theme um, and recognizing um, suicide and um, there is a stigma attached to it um, and in both the armed forces and the construction industry which are overwhelmingly male um, there is a stigma and what's really encouraging is seeing senior people coming out and talking about it. So there have been various things I've seen recently with senior armory officers, senior warrant officers. Our own chief executive um, talked about um, him struggling with talking about um, the death of his father-in-law. Um, and he's a very strong, strong person who wouldn't normally uh, open up in that way. So we need to take action. We need to give others uh, the encouragement and the confidence to hold their hand up and the phrase it's OK to not be OK is really, really important. We need to encourage people to speak up and take action. Could I pick up one of uh, Roger's comments or a couple of them, actually? One, I think the most positive thing that we can run with is that often for the vast majority of people having suicidal thoughts or being on the verge of suicide is very much a transient mental state. People can move on from this. And the vast majority of people, if they get help, you know, can move on from this. And I think that's so important. Some people have described it, suicide, very, very sadly, as a permanent a solution to a temporary problem. And people can move on. Roger also mentioned about the construction industry and the armed forces being overwhelmingly male. And we see in England and Wales that three times as many men die through suicide than women and I think these are very very significant for the for if you like the build force community and the construction and sort of armed forces community so I just wanted to echo what Roger had said there I think it's very very important I think for us it's, it's important to take an action how we, how we might um, look at the signs you, you often can't see it um, but um, there's a phrase that many military people will, will recognize in their training which is and we look for the presence of the abnormal or the absence of the normal. And whilst that's been um, often put in an environment where we're perhaps looking in, in a tactical way on operations to see what's unusual, because if it doesn't look right, it probably isn't, isn't right. That's, that's the same 
of looking at the people we work with. Are, are they are they normally well turned out? Are they normally on time? And um, has this changed? You know, um, there's a mood swinging. You know, often people mask these things. I mean, Bernie will know so much more than I about this, but I think that's that's an important thing to talk about, Bernie. Would you like to, to add anything? Yeah, sure, absolutely. I think what you said, noticing the change um, is so important. It could be change in behaviour, interaction with other people, their personal behaviour, things they say, the kind of comments they make. It's such a difficult area because stigma, we're going into the world of taboo here. It's such a difficult area to talk about. Some people will refer to it indirectly. I don't think I can go on anymore. I don't think I've got anything left. Uh, what's left for me these kind of comments so you can notice it for people to talk about it directly it can happen people will be open but it's you know people are so worried particularly yeah you know, I would say it within our communities that we're looking at specifically what kind of response am I going to get am I going to get we well, just shake yourself get on with it sort yourself out whereas we want a response that is a, one of compassion support and concern and guidance to where people can get help and support. But the kind of changes, and I, I think one of the things for the veteran community in particular, one of the things we look at is the whole area of responses to their service where they may have lost colleagues, and we talk about survivor guilt and things like that. There's a whole range of things that we can look at, this, look at and if we look at them where we are at the moment without going down any kind of political road, I think we would be looking at one of the couple of the signs we look at with suicide is people's feelings of hopelessness and helplessness. And when we look at what's going on currently in Afghanistan, I think those are two very, very relevant um, areas we should be concerned about within our community. So, you know, it's really about change. It could be dropping work performance, people sleeping differently, eating differently. Um, and also very, very importantly, um, is that when people talk about suicide, there's this myth that if people talk about it and they're not going to do it, it's the ones that don't talk that go and do. I'm sorry, that is a myth. We always take it seriously and try and offer support, concern, compassion and signposting as much as we can to get people some help. And if you are, a, if you have a family member or a friend and they're telling you they're OK, they repeatedly tell you they're OK, and you know they're not, what can you do? I think, and I think we could do a chorus on this, is we must ask twice. We must delve a little further. And if they're absolutely adamant, okay, give them some space and then return to it if you're still concerned. But I think this thing about ask twice is so important if people aren't coping. And also, if you are with someone and any part of your being is feeling this person in front of me may be considering suicide ask it saves lives um you may get you know receive an expletive for doing that but it's the probably the best expletive you're ever going to hear what you that's the one you want to hear because the thing is open the door for people it is so hard to talk about if you're with someone if you get it wrong, you get it wrong. You apologise, whatever. But you've opened the door and research strongly indicates that if you ask that question, it can save lives. It really can because it's such a difficult thing to talk about. You've opened the door for them to talk about. Please always ask. So absolutely crucial to saving lives. Ask them, are you thinking of suicide? Ask them directly. Um, if you need a little run at it, Maybe it's some of the things you're saying, I believe are things people may mention when they're thinking of suicide. Are you thinking of suicide? However we get there with all the compassion you can muster, do ask the question directly. I'd, I would totally echo that, Bernie. Um, so many times people say, oh, how are you today? Are you OK? Yes, I'm fine. And it's almost just a sort of a greeting um that's that's a polite thing to say no it's not you've got when you're asking that question you've got to be prepared for the answer to be actually no i'm not and can i talk about it so so we always enter that that conversation in that in that frame but of course saying are you okay yes i'm okay are you sure yes that's not the kind of asking twice that bernie's talking about he's saying do the tough thing you, use that word say you know have you had suicidal thoughts are you thinking of suicide 
and 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 if it is brushed off and 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 it's and it's no don't be so silly whatever made you th think about that you can have a conversation but if there is something dark something lurking some um state change then you can then listen and that's really important next next thing is to, to actively listen to listen non-judgmentally to hear what the person's got to say and just let them outpour um and, and, and be kind to them um and um those those things there of, of listening judgmentally and being kind are, are not not my ideas actually i think we're going to put a link to the lighthouse club charity they've got a video which talks about asking twice which is you know bernie's point and goes on to say listen non-judgmentally and be kind it takes so little time you could save a life and it would be worth it yeah and if you are in a conversation try to veer towards open questions to encourage that discussion but always very gently prompting you know we're not going into doing an, a bit of analysis or delving too much it's just being there as a concerned human being and i'm really pleased roger has used the word kindness it's one of those words that amongst men uh, maybe we struggle with that a little bit more but this is about kindness compassion being concerned for a fellow human being um, that really is at a point in their life where they're maybe only seeing suicide as the only alternative they've got and it's so important we offer another alternative if we can and, and i should emphasize I and mean, we here we have two males of a certain age um talking to each other and being hosted by, by angela of course but it's not just a problem for men it is obviously a problem for women but within the two areas we we're talking about which is so um so dominated by by males which obviously we're we're trying to redress that balance at the moment and level things up but um it is uh it is pretty well known that there's a stigma that, that, that men have attached to this that that don't like to talk to it and we need we need to follow the example like i mentioned at the beginning of of senior people who have opened up who give us confidence to do that um because your health is the most important thing um and we should never ever forget that and within your role in, in Civvy Street, Roger, do you recommend that line managers should be speaking to their staff about it, that team leaders should be discussing uh, it at team meetings? Absolutely. I mean, it's been a really interesting journey for me. I, I left five years ago and um, it was a stage where in the military it was being talked about. Um, and, and I think um, certainly the, the sector I joined, it wasn't talked about as, as, as much. And um, there's a big drive at the moment. Um, with awareness of, of mental health and, and mental health first aiders, people that can um, point people in the right direction. Because of course, um, we don't, we don't, we're not experts in this. As line managers, as, as as peers, as friends, we're not experts in in how to deal with the state, but we are experts in knowing the people, and so we can pick up those signs. And and I think that's a a really important thing that line managers, friends, colleagues. Um, feel confident to ask that kind of question of are you OK? Um, it, it is a vital part, that first step, because there's lots of help out there. And, and maybe that's an area to talk about now, because there are many, many different places that we can um, signpost people for help. I mean, Bernie, do you want to do you want to cover some of the Yeah, comments? sure. I think we'll do the list between us on this. Um, firstly, I'd like to say, I mean, it's so important that you just alluded to about getting senior people, you know, uh, involved but I think this whole idea of mental health awareness for all is crucial it's absolutely crucial all organizations should be embracing this mental health awareness for all it's a bit of learning that's been uh, was left behind for many generations organizations I would talk about well let's start with a statutory one um, the NHS, you've got, um, if you're in that acute situation, there may be uh, the op opportunities to speak to NHS 24-7 mental health, which are numbers that will take you to local crisis teams. If you struggle to find those through Google or do a search, um, you can go to NHS 111. They can guide you as well. There's 999 when if we are in the ultimate acute situation, 999 or 112, we have those as well. Um, we have the Samaritans. Um, I think they're an amazing organisation. They are there 24 seven. Um, they offer support through text, through telephone call, 
and email emails as well. Um, close friends, family members shouldn't be excluded from this. Someone you feel you can talk to. Um, there's the campaign against living miserably. Calm that offers a 24 hour helpline. Shout is a text based 24 hour helpline. There are many of these. There are lots of places to go. Um, I would recommend for anybody involved in this, there is an app that you can download onto any phone called the Hub of Hope. And if you're talking to someone in a different area to you, if you have their area, their postcode, or you have an idea of their area, if you put in their area or postcode into the app, it will throw up information about the local mental health services, uh, starting with the geographically closest. There's a few to start you off with. Roger, over to you. Yeah, um, I, the, you, you've covered um, fantastic um, uh, spectrum there, and, and those are the the places to go to in a, an acute time. Perhaps if I, I, I look at um, if you identify perhaps earlier on and it's not that acuteness. Um, so I would say, um, and, and I'm going to focus in on veterans and, and, and the construction. So Combat Stress, fantastic charity, a great organisation, but they they will point you towards the, the organisations that, that Bernie's mentioned for that acute um, uh, that acute end. The, the NHS have, have launched earlier this year um, Operation Courage, which is about dealing with veterans specifically and having that courage to come forward. And they're looking at, um, at that high level um, uh, with the, you know, there's two to three million veterans, I think, um, in, in the UK. Um, and they're thinking they're probably going to be around about 500 a year that they're mainly to treat at the high end. So um, we'll, we'll put a link into that as well. And I mentioned the Lighthouse Club and I didn't say what Lighthouse Club is. It's the uh, construction workers and families charity. So um, they they've got uh, resources and, and also a helpline as well. So there are lots and lots of resources out there. And um, you know, I, I I think it's it's about getting help. Um, what those what those organisations do is amazing. Um, and uh, if you pick something up as an individual and you just sense that you know something's not right, if it doesn't look right, it probably isn't then encourage uh, the person that you have taken the time to ask, are you OK? Ask them twice. Have you had suicidal thoughts? And then give them the details for the organisations and, and encourage them and follow up. Follow up with them and, you know, you will have made a massive difference to them by asking that question twice. So then continue to be there to support them because they will have huge respect for you that you, you've done that and you've helped them in that way. Bernie, any final advice? The only thing I would say, you know, um, adding to the list is that I think Operation Courage would come under the banner of TILS. Uh, and I, I always get this one slightly wrong. So if I get shot down, I get shot down. It, TILS is the Transition Involvement and Liaison Service, which is the NHS support service uh, for vet for the veteran community, you have to access it through your GP. Uh, so I'd highly recommend that at the early stages as well, very much at the early stages as well. OK, so heartfelt thank you to both of you for sharing this guidance. We are making this video for all of us, as it's likely many of us will struggle at points in our life and people need to know that help is out there. These feelings can pass. So please keep moving, keep talking. The darkness passes and we want everyone to be aware that they can help. Now, if you need our help or just want to chat, please get in touch with the Bill Force team and I'll share our details and all of the organisations that were discussed today. We can also put you in touch with Bernie and Roger, two of the kindest individuals you will ever meet who really, really care. So best wishes to you all and please look after yourself. Be well. Be well. Keep keep well and stay safe.